Welcome to this lecture on IS21, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. Now IS21, I've divided this into five sections, types of foreign activities, scope, what is a foreign operation, other important definitions, and section five, the translation of a foreign operation. Okay, so section one to four, we have dealt with in week nine. Therefore, guys, please ensure that you are able to do these examples. Please first watch the revision recording again. If you're not sure and you're unfamiliar with the principles, watch the detailed lecture that I've provided you with in week nine. And then please ensure that you are able to do the examples on your own. There's two examples, example one and example two. And then only are you allowed to move on and watch this recording. Majority of our time will be focused on the translation of foreign operations. Therefore, extremely important, as always, that you know your group principles. Guys, if you don't know your group principles, you will be in trouble. You're not, you will not be able to do these questions. Then I'm going to spend a bit of time on what you should be able to do after you have watched this lecture. Identify the functional currency. Translate financial statements. Consolidate your translated financials. Translate financial statements of a standalone foreign operation from its functional currency to a different presentation currency. Remember your rules. Your statement of financial position, your assets and your liabilities at year end should be translated at a closing rate. Your profit and loss line items should be translated at an average rate. Now guys, you need to know these things. We did cover this in week nine. Now the thing that I wanna highlight to you is that you need to be able to account for the change in degree of control in a foreign operation. Now this is important and this can be difficult. Number seven, you need to be able to disclose the required information in respect of foreign operations in accordance with IFRS 12 disclosure of interest in other entities and in terms of IS 21. Therefore, please ensure that you spend a few minutes on IS 12 again and ensure that you know the disclosure and presentation in terms of IS 21. Now, extremely important when we look at translating foreign operations. Again, there's rules that you unfortunately have to study and know. You need to know how to apply these rules. Guys, I'm going to indicate this to you. Remember, in week nine, we looked at the rules relating our translation. I have discussed this with you just now where we have to translate our assets and liabilities at a closing rate and our profit and loss line items at an average rate. Now, this is a rule or rules that you need to know. You need to know how to apply them. Then the second important thing, you need to know your general group principles. And number three, you need to do questions. The only way that you will be able to practice these rules will be by doing questions. Now, let's refer to our translation of a foreign operations section in our lecture notes. Translation of a foreign operation for including in financial statements. Now, you will identify when I use FO, this means foreign operation, therefore, my blue block is my legend. Now, what is important to identify is that when we translate a branch or a subsidiary, you need to follow exactly the same rules. Therefore, the same rules will apply if this is a branch or a subsidiary, which is our foreign operation. And you need to translate them into a presentation currency you need to follow exactly the same rules. Now, let's have a look at a very basic example. We have a parent and the presentation currency is RAND. Now, remember your presentation currency? This is how do you present your annual financial statements. 
The functional currency of our parent is rand as well. Functional, functional is the day-to-day -day operations, and this parent has a subsidiary, which is a foreign operation. Now, the functional currency is dollar, and presentation currency of our subsidiary is dollar as well. Now, remember. We need to present our financials in the presentation currency. Therefore, for consolidation purposes, our annual financials should be in RAND. Now, it is important that you know that you can immediately translate your functional currency. Therefore, first, translate your functional currency to presentation currency, guys. Do you see you do not have to translate a functional currency of the foreign operation to presentation currency and then translate this to the parent's presentation currency. You do not have to do this. This is a very long route. You can immediately transfer the functional currency in dollar and translate this to the presentation currency okay now guys i just want to explain to you an extremely basic basic example okay guys so this is really very basic we have a foreign operation now remember when you start with an audit you receive a trial balance from your client you with me on that one guys now what is the first thing that you do with that trial balance and this is normally your third year article clerk, your balance of your TB should be zero. Therefore, your trial balance should balance. Okay. Now, when we look at our IS21 rules, remember guys, we need to incorporate this foreign operation into a group and the presentation currency of our group is rand value okay we have now received our trial balance and the foreign currency amounts due balance we have our assets we have our liabilities the net effect is our equity and this does balance and your total is zero now when we apply our rules of is 21 we need to translate our statement of financial position line items to closing rate. We need to translate our profit and loss line items at an average rate. Now we do this. We translate our foreign operation or our foreign currency of the foreign operation. Do you agree with me? Due to the fact that we use different rates, our TB in RAND will not balance. It will not be zero. Why not? Because we are translating our foreign currency using different rates. The rates that IS21 tells us to use. Now, that difference, and this is important, that difference will be recognized in our FCTR account in our group. When we have a foreign operation that we have translated into rent value and consolidate that foreign operation into our group, we will have to recognize an FCTR account. And important with this FCTR account, the FCTR account will be divided into your parent as well as your NCI. Okay, important guys, when you look at your NCI, remember your NCI can either be recognized based on the proportionate share or based on the fair value. Now, a proportionate share will not share in goodwill being recognized. If at fair value, our NCI will share in the goodwill. Now, I know that this is extremely basic, guys, but we are going to add rules of IS21 to this. 
Now, what you need to be able to identify from this is that we will have to recognize one, a normal FCTR account, yes, and two, if there is goodwill, IS21 indicates us that we will see this as an asset of the foreign operation. Okay, guys, are you with me on this one? Therefore, there will be FCTR relating to the goodwill on its own. And then what you need to remember, if your NCI is recognized based at fair value, your NCR will share the FCTR of the goodwill. Okay, so let me just quickly recap this one. One, we have an FCTR account due to the fact that we consolidate. That FCTR account, we need to divide into our parent and our NCI. If at consolidation there is goodwill, that goodwill will have its own FCTR. And if our NCI is recognized based at fair value, our NCI will share in the goodwill, therefore will share in our FCTR account. Okay, now this is extremely important and I know that this can be a bit complicated. Now guys, let's have a look at an intra-group transaction. When we have a foreign operation and a parent, you need to follow your normal consolidation principles in terms of intra-group transactions. But when there is monetary assets or liabilities that cannot be eliminated without showing results of our foreign currency fluctuations in the consolidated financials. Now, first, when we look at the word monetary, monetary means money, loans normally. Therefore, this will normally be a loan in an example. In the definitions section, I did include the difference between monetary and non-monetary for you. When we look at a very basic example on how to apply this paragraph 45, we have a parent that provides a loan to a foreign operation. The loan to the foreign operation is in foreign currency and this is on 1 June 20.16, 200,000 dollars. Repayable in the foreign currency, important. Now our rate on 1 June is 10 Rand to the foreign currency on 31 December 11 rand to the foreign currency. When we look at the journal entry in the separate financials of our parent on initial recognition, remember the parent provides the loan to the foreign operation. Therefore, we will have to debit a loan receivable and credit bank. And this is the foreign currency 200,000 times 10 rand. Now, at year end, due to our IS21 rules, remember, all foreign line items in our trial balance should be translated at spot rate, closing rate at year end. Now, we need to adjust our loan receivable with a difference. This will be the 200,000 foreign currency times 1 rand. And at year end, the foreign operation owes the parent 2.2 million. We will have to debit our loan receivable as this increases and credit a foreign exchange gain. Now, when you look at our group, IS21 indicates to us, and this is a rule I've indicated this to you in your margin, that this foreign exchange gain that we have recognized in our separate records, we need to transfer to an FCTR account. Okay, guys, this is a rule. You need to know this. Therefore, when you identify that there's loans between 
the parent and the foreign operation. You need to know, due to the fact that the loan is a monetary item, the foreign exchange gains or losses recognized on that item should be translated or transferred to a foreign currency translation reserve account in our group. Therefore, this is an additional pro forma journal and you need to eliminate the intra-group loan as per our normal consolidation rules.